So a couple of months ago, I was catching up with my buddy Steve, who you all know as the Audiophiliac. And as we often do in our conversations, I asked him, hey, is there anything that's just really stood out to you lately? Something that's just really impressed you? And without missing a beat, Steve told me that the new affordable products by Klipsch have really impressed him. So I said, you know what? Say no more, let's make this happen. And now here I am a couple of months later, proud to bring you all my review of the little Klipsch R51M. So yeah, let's roll the intro. So here it is, a little R51M. And due to how I have this camera angled, it's kind of difficult to tell how small the speaker is. So to help give you some visual representation here, I'm gonna hold up the CD. And as you can tell, it's a pretty small speaker. Now, if you're looking for exact specifications such as weight and dimensions, just click on the description box down below and I have a link to the product page where you can get all of that good information. Also, if you're here because you're hoping to get a little education on horn-loaded speakers, I'm gonna actually have a link to another YouTuber's page down in the description box because they did a great job of really breaking down the science behind horns and what the advantages are. So for the sake of this video, I just want to focus on the product, tell you what you get with it, and what Klipsch's overall design goals were, starting with the price. So these speakers retail for $250, US although to be fair, you can sometimes pick them up for a lot less money than that whenever Klipsch or one of their retailers is running a pretty decent sale. Now, this is going to be a compact, two-way rear-ported design. In fact, let me turn these speakers around real quick. And there you can see the rear port. You can see a pair of basic binding posts that accept spades, banana plugs, and bare wire. Nothing too crazy. Going back to the front. So basically, here's what the deal is. Klipsch set out to make a pretty good evolution over the predecessor with this speaker, and they did a number of small things that actually amount to a pretty big difference. The first thing is that the horn itself is a, quite a bit larger than the previous speaker, and more importantly, it was designed to match perfectly with the five and a quarter inch woofer down here. And guys, I can't tell you how important that is when it comes to driver integration, just when it comes to the overall performance of the loudspeaker, that is huge. Also, the tweeter inside the horn is going to be a one inch titanium dome tweeter that hasn't changed but the tweeter itself has actually been modified the phase plug has been refined even further it's actually pretty darn thin so if you have little kids you might want to leave the grills on because i'd imagine this is going to be pretty easy to break but the whole design goal is to make sure that the frequency response is smoother and that ultimately you get the advantages of a horn loaded speaker which is going to be efficiency you're going to get dynamics and power handling and also controlled directivity without some of the unwanted things that Klipsch has actually become fairly known for, which is that famous horn shout. So that's ultimately what they're going for here, which leads me, of course, to how this speaker sounds. So let's get right to it. All right, guys, so I think the best way to start this conversation is to first address the elephant in the room, which is this. Klipsch speakers are known for having a very distinct sound, and it's the kind of sound that you either really love or not so much. There's very rarely somebody who's in between those extremes. And the big question is, do the R51s do a successful job of bridging that gap? And I want to answer it like this. So if you were to take home these speakers, what you could expect is a sound that is definitively Klipsch. And by that, I mean the presentation is going to be lively. The sound is going to project in a very forward way. The treble is going to be distinctly tilted up. The mid-range is going to be slightly thin. And the rest of the mid-range and the bass is actually going to be pretty clean, quick, and punchy sounding. This is a product that has distinct character. So if you're looking for something that has a ruler flat frequency response, this isn't for you. If you're looking for something that's rolled off sounding and warm, well, again, this isn't for you. This is going to be for somebody who wants a compact solution that has that engaging personality, they like their treble, and they want something that, again, for the size and for the money, does a good enough job of replicating the kind of energy that you would associate with a live musical event. That's what these speakers are all about. But the big question is, do they do all of those things while addressing some of the problems that people like me have had with their affordable loudspeakers? And I'll start off with the most egregious complaint people have, which is horn shout. It's very difficult not to have that with any horn-based loudspeaker, let alone something this affordable. But I'll say this. With the grills on, with the speakers pointed directly out into the room with no toe-in whatsoever, and at five to six feet away, I can honestly say 
that while listening to a huge variety of music, I couldn't really pick up on the classic traits of a horn-loaded speaker. In fact, if I were blindfolded, I may not even be able to tell you that I was listening to a horn speaker. I'd like to say I picked up on some of the tonal traits of it, but by and large, Klipsch has done a phenomenal job of addressing one of the biggest complaints that a lot of people I know have with their speakers, which is the horn shout. And the fact that they've done it at this price point is pretty impressive. But even beyond that, there's driver integration. The previous series had issues with that. I could sit back and listen to them, and no matter the gear, no matter how they were set up, I could always pick out where the horn dropped off and the woofers kicked in. That really isn't a problem anymore. Again, from about five feet away, the driver integration is phenomenal, especially for something at this price point. Moving on, the treble on clip speakers have always been pronounced to the point of actually being sibilant. And sibilant is when things like S's and TH's are kind of pronounced like this. And it's just really freaking annoying. And while the treble is definitely boosted up, it doesn't have that sibilant character to it, even on poor recordings, which is, again, very nice. It's a relief. And then finally, another problem I've had with Clips products is that you usually have to tow them in a little bit, or in other words, point them towards you, in order to get a lockdown center image, which is a problem because with the treble already boosted up, now it's just going to be ripping your ears off, and it's just, it's an unwanted situation. Well, with these speakers, again, pointed directly out into the room, even with the grills on, you get this locked-in center image. Just absolutely locked in, while still enjoying a pretty wide and immersive soundstage. And all of these things add up to one very impressive little speaker. And I would say it's a significant evolution in their sound, in the sense that you maintain that Klipsch House sound while addressing so many of the things that people have issues with. Now, let's go into a little bit more detail and then we'll move on. Starting with the top end, the top end, like I said, is tilted up. It's something you're either gonna like or you're not gonna like, it's as simple as that, but at least it's not overdone. And for somebody who's just getting into this, it may actually be preferable because when you're just getting into this, you wanna be wowed, you wanna have that experience that reminds you of what live music sounds like. And guess what? These do that very well, especially for the size. The mid-range, I can't complain about the mid-range too much. Maybe it's a little bit thin, but who really cares because most receivers and most products that people are pairing these speakers up to already have that kind of boosted mid-range. So when you actually put this on real-world gear, it balances out very well. And what you end up with is mid-range that's actually pretty full, pretty, I would say, even natural sounding under the right circumstances. And then you have the bass, which isn't tuned to be overly bombastic. In fact, it's tuned to be tight and clean. And a good example of how impressive the bass is, at least to me, is when I listened to Vince Guaraldi Trio's Christmas album, and or Charlie Brown Christmas album. And it's very difficult for small speakers like this, let alone affordable speakers, to get the bass right. Either it's overdone, overdone, or it's just tonally a mess. These speakers freaking nailed it. It was thick when it needed to be, it was thin when it needed to be, and it was always tuneful. I can list... $2,000 monitors that can't even do that album right, and these did it like it was nothing. Still, these speakers aren't perfect, because while they do a great job of playing a wide variety of music well, and while Klipsch has done a fantastic job of addressing some of the main complaints that people like me have with their affordable lineup, well, you know, you can't have it all, and let's talk about those problems now. All right, so here's the deal, guys. These are small speakers, which means if you like to crank the hell out of your music and you have a big room to fill, these aren't gonna be for you. You're gonna need bigger speakers. Likewise, if you like a lot of bass, well, guess what? You're gonna need bigger speakers because there's only so much you can expect from something at this price point and at this size. Also, the treble, I've mentioned it before, but it is very tilted up, which means you're either gonna love it or not. I can't really tell you. It's just something you're gonna have to experience for yourself. The good news is they're pretty small, they're pretty affordable, so it should be a pretty easy thing to audition in your own room. And a lot of retailers offer free returns, so for a lot of you, it's going to be a risk-free proposition. And next, I need to mention near-field performance. So this is where things are going to get interesting. If you plan on using them for like your desktop system, if you do mostly gaming, you're probably going to love these speakers because they're voiced perfectly for that. But if you're going to be doing mostly music, and especially if you're going to be kind of critical about it, then yes, that horn is going to be very audible. You really do need to put, I would say, four feet or further away from your ears to the speakers in order for the driver integration to become really solid and in order for that horn to become a little bit more invisible. 
In the desktop environment, I like them, but I can't guarantee they're gonna be to everybody's taste. But ultimately, these are actually pretty well-rounded speakers, and that leads me to my final thoughts. All right, so I'm gonna end this review on an unusual note because what I wanna do is share a little bit of history with you guys, which is this. In a previous life, it used to be my job to grow markets for some of the largest electronic manufacturers out there. Usually this would mean going into stores like Best Buy, working with regional and local managers on effective go-to-market strategies, training sales staff, working with the public, all that good stuff. And one of the things that I would do just as an added value service to my customers is that I would train the sales staff on home theater gear receivers, speakers, and all that stuff. And I did it for a number of reasons. Number one, it's fun. But number two, not only did it help the consumer because a lot of customers would come in there and they'd buy a sound bar to go with their TV, not knowing that the same amount of money could go so much further with a good set of speakers and a receiver that you can build a system around. But on top of that, the store would win because quite frankly, there's more margin in that gear. So they'd make more money off of selling a system like that than they would an expensive 4K TV. The associates would win because they got to have a little bit of fun and also would make their numbers look good. It was just, it was a win all the way around and it ultimately was a win for me because it was one of the many things that you could do to just get really good support from your region. Now, I say this because Klipsch has always been in stores like this and when it came to Klipsch, I would tell people like, look, this product has a definitive performance envelope. You're either going to love it or you're not and that's just how it is. And with these speakers, I can safely say that Klipsch is doing a great job of bridging that gap. They have the strengths that you know from Eclipse product, but they've addressed, in my opinion, many of the problems that people like me have had with their products, especially their more affordable products. And the result is something that I think is really worth celebrating because this is a fun, it's an engaging product to listen to. Look, it's not gonna be for everyone, nothing is, but I definitely envy the people who are just getting into this hobby now. You have so many great options to choose from. I mean, it's really incredible. And I think Klipsch has done a fantastic job with these speakers. And for somebody who's looking for a compact solution, this is gonna actually jump up to the top of my recommendation list. They did a great job with them. That's just my general take on them. And as always, guys, I appreciate you watching. And until next time, peace.